Hi, a very good morning you all. I am Lakshmi Narayana Gunta, PGT Zoology in Model Schools and NEET Super 60 Zoology faculty at Super 60 Dupalwalsa Sri Kakulu. Today we are going to discuss the human male reproductive system. Reproduction is the biological process by which new individual organisms are produced from their parents. These new individual organisms are called as offspring which are similar to their parents in many aspects. And reproduction involves gametogenesis which is nothing but the formation of gametes. In males it is called as spermatogenesis and in females it is called as oogenesis. And insemination. After the gametes they are formed, they may be transferred to the female genital tract. And this transfer of sperms or gametes is called as insemination, which follows the gametogenesis. And fertilization. If the gametes are transferred, whether the transfer may be artificial or it may be natural, the gametes they may fuse to form a zygote. This process is called as fertilization. Fertilization is the fusion of gamete. And after the fertilization, the zygote is formed. The zygote, it undergoes a series of division and it goes and attaches to the uterine wall. This attachment of the embryo to the uterine wall is called as implantation. After implantation, the embryo, it starts developing and it starts developing organs and organ systems and this process is called as gestation and after the all the organs and organ systems are formed the baby has to be delivered out this process of delivery of baby is called as parturition all these events they occur only after puberty and now let us discuss the male reproductive system. The male reproductive system, it consists of a number of sex organs in the pubic region. The male reproductive system in humans consists of a pair of testes, accessory ducts, accessory glands and the external genitalia. Let us now discuss all these things one by one. First of all, let us discuss the testes. A pair of testes, also called as testicles, they are vowel pinky structures present in a sac like structure. These are the primary sex organs of males. Primary sex organs of males are testes. And this is a sac, a sac like structure, a pouch like structure where these testes are located is called as the scrotum. The scrotum. This scrotum it is very much useful in maintaining 2 to 2.5 degree lesser temperature than the body temperature which is an optimum temperature for spermatogenesis or the production of sperms. And as you know these testicles or testes they are in the abdominal cavity and by the time of ninth month of pregnancy they descend into the scrotum and they descend through a canal called as inguinal canal. Inguinal canal it separates the cavity of scrotal sacs and the cavity of abdomen. Okay. Each testis is covered by a fibrous envelope. This is a testis and this testis it is covered by a fibrous envelope called as tunica albuginia and this is the tunica albuginia this tunica albuginia it forms internal septa how it forms in internal septa means here and there this tunica albuginia it protrudes inside the testis and they form a chamber called as testicular lobule here you can clearly observe the testicular lobules this way by the protrusion of this tunica albuginia nearly 250 lobules are formed in each testis 250 lobules are formed in each testis each lobule has one to three seminiferous tubules in it here you can clearly observe here in this lobule only one seminiferous tubule is there. Here we have two seminiferous tubules. This way each lobule has one to three seminiferous tubules in it. 
Each seminiferous tubule is lined by germinal epithelium which is made up of spermatogonial mother cells. This is the seminiferous tubule and the walls of this seminiferous tubule they have the spermatogonial mother cells and also the septoli cells. Here you can clearly observe the sperms are formed by the spermatogonial mother cells which are present in each seminiferous tubule. This is the cross section of a testis and the circles here they represent seminiferous tubules and these are the spermatogonial mother cells they produce sperms and here you can clearly observe the spermatogonial mother cells okay the septoli cells they nourish the sperm cells interstitial cells of lady or lady cells present between the seminiferous tubules they produce androgens. This is a seminiferous tubule and this is also a seminiferous tubule. In between these seminiferous tubules, there is a space called as Leydig space or interstitial space or interstitial space of Leydig. These Leydig cells or interstitial cells, they produce androgens. The most important androgen is testosterone, which controls the development of secondary sexual characters in human males. The secondary sexual characters involves the development of beard, mistakes and development of hair in groins or underarms and low pitch voice and development of powerful breast musculature in hum human males. All these are the secondary sexual characters found in human males which are observed after the age of 13 or 14. This is because of this particular androgen that is the testosterone. And let us now see how these sperms they travel through. Okay. The sperms they are produced in the seminiferous tubule. Walls of the seminiferous tubules have spermatogonial mother cells which produce the sperms. These sperms they are produced from the seminiferous tubule. They travel through the reti testes. They reach the vasa afferentia and from there they reach the epididymis. Here you can clearly observe. This is the longitudinal section of a testis. Here you can observe these are the seminiferous tubules. These seminiferous tubules, the ducts from each seminiferous tubules, 5 to 10 ducts, unite to form a reti testis. Reti testis. This reti testis they lead into the epididymis through vasa afferentia. These are vasa afferentia. Okay. And these vasa afferentia they lead into the epididymis. From there, they pass to the vasa differentia or the ductus difference. Vasa differentia or the ductus difference. This ductus difference or vasa differentia, it after joining with the seminal vascular duct, it forms into ejaculatory duct. The, a pair of ejaculatory ducts you can watch here. Okay, these ejaculatory ducts they open into the urethra. This is urethra. This one is urethra. Particularly the prosthetic urethra which passes through this prostate gland is called as prosthetic urethra. This is the urinary bladder and this is the neck of the urinary bladder and this is the prosthetic urethra with which the ejaculatory ducts they join. Okay. And this urethra it passes through outside and opens out through urethral matus. This is urethral matus and passes to the vagina of the female. Vagina of a female. Coming back to the accessory ducts. We have completed testes. Now let us move to accessory ducts. There are majorly three accessory ducts we find come across. The epididymis, the vasa differentia and urethra. Let us now discuss the epididymis. So, epididymis is further divided into caput epididymis, corpus epididymis and coda epididymis. You can clearly observe here. Head of the epididymis which is connected with vasa afferentia is called as the caput epididymis. The body of the epididymis is called as corpus epididymis and the tail of the epididymis is called as coda epididymis. Okay. And this epididymis, the most important thing with epididymis is it provides time and place for the sperms to mature. Here the sperms, they stay here for some time and they become matured in the epididymis. Okay. Coming back to vasa differentia, vasa 
difference also called as ductus difference ductus difference here you can observe the long tubes the long tubes are called as vasa differentia or ductus difference these are vasa differentia they are muscular tubes arising from cauda epididymis this cauda epididymis leads into vasa differentia this vasa differentia or ductus difference it is lined with specialized tissue called as pseudo stratified epithelium pseudo stratified epithelium after joining the duct of seminal vesicle these two ducts they unite to form a ductus ejaculatorius or ejaculatory duct coming back to the next duct urethra two ejaculatory ducts join at the center of the prostate and open into urethra here you can clearly observe this is the urinary bladder and this is the neck of the urinary bladder this is the prostate at the center of the prostate the two ejaculatory ducts unite with the urethra this color this colored one is urethra okay and this urethra is a common duct or a sharing duct both for reproductive and urinary systems and this urethra is 20 centimeters in males and 4 centimeters in female this urethra it originates from the neck of the urinary bladder and extends through the penis to its outer opening called as urethral meatus and coming back to the accessory glands accessory glands there are three accessory glands in human males the first one is a pair of seminal vesicles and unpaired prostate gland and a pair of cowper's glands seminal vesicles seminal vesicles are a pair of structures located posterior to the urinary bladder this is this one is urinary bladder these seminal vesicles they are located posterior to the urinary bladder and the secretions of these seminal vesicles it accounts for nearly 60 percentage of the semen 60 percentage of the semen it is an alkaline fluid with fructose proteins citric acid potassium and prostaglandins these prostaglandins they make the cervix of the female receptive to sperms most important thing is they make the prostaglandins they make the cervix receptive to sperms coming to the next type of gland the prostate gland the prostate gland it is an unpaired structure located beneath the urinary bladder immediately beneath the urinary bladder here it is a urinary bladder and below this urine and below this urinary bladder this is a gland called as prostate gland it is an unpaired gland unpaired gland and the secretions of this prostate gland accounts for 15 to 30 percentage of the semen because it is slightly acidic and it activates the sperms and provides nutrition to the sperms okay and most common cancer in human males is the prostate cancer coming back to the next gland the cowper's gland they are paired glands they are also called as bulbo urethral glands they are present beneath the prostate gland prostate gland here you can clearly observe this is the urinary bladder and this this one is a prostate and these are seminal vesicles and this one the bulbous structures these bulbous structures called as bulbo urethral glands or cowper's glands they are present at the base of the penis base of the penis the secretion is alkaline alkaline secretion lubricates the urethra lubricates the urethra as we already have discussed urethra is a sharing duct both for reproductive and excretory systems that's why in order to remove the urinary residues this cowper's gland secretion cowper's gland secretion it removes all the urinary residues that's why it acts as a flushing agent Whenever sexual thoughts arise in human males, the cowper's glands, they are motivated to and release the secretion. And this secretion, it acts as a flushing agent. Coming to the last one, the external genitalia, which includes the penis and the scrotum. Penis serves to transport both urine and sperms. Urine and sperms. And, and it is an intromittent organ. Intromittent organ for transfer of sperms into vagina the transverse section of this penis shows three columns of 
tissue the dorsal two columns are called as corpora cavernosa corpora cavernosa and this ventral tissue is called as corpus spongiosum through which the urethra passes and this corpora cavernosa they are filled with specialized tissues which are helpful for the erection of the penis erection of the penis let us finish this session with a few questions nerve cells of testis are which cells are called as the nerve cells of testis the sertoli cells the follicular cells primary spermatocytes and the leydig cells what is your response yes sertoli cells are the nerve cells they are called as the nerve cells and next question vaso afferentia from testis leads to caput epididymis corpus epididymis cauda epididymis reti testis what is your answer nice the caput epididymis is the correct answer okay thank you thank you for watching and just follow me on youtube simply by typing lakshmi narayana gunta okay we will meet in our next session with female reproductive system